the last thing we're going to do is shape the plane. Now, I really like this shape, uh, a fairly steep curve on the back so that, that when, you, when you grab it, you're, you're just pushing in the right direction. You're pushing down and forward, and then you know, a little slope up at the front, which makes it nice to grab there. We also want you know the back rounded so it's comfortable. The front doesn't really matter. I've got my uh, blank here all glued up, ready to go. And you know because I I drilled these extra holes down here, uh, I'm gonna you know shorten my plane. If those were not there, I could you know come up from about here and and like that. So I'm gonna you know just shorten everything up a little bit. I need to take the wedge out. Uh, so to do that, you know, I'll just tap on the back of the plane. That usually loosens things up. And I should be ready to go here. So I'll go ahead and draw some lines on here. And then I'm going to go to the bandsaw and, uh, and cut those curves. I've got my curves drawn on here now. The other thing I should point out, of course, we need to take a little bit off of the top, and that's just, it doesn't really matter what that looks like. Of course, you don't want to go too close to the uh, cross pin hole there. So, you know, it's nice to have at the front a little bit of an angle because you're going to be, uh, you know, grabbing there. So you want to be able to push, push forward. The other thing I didn't mention is, you know, when you are, you know, tapping on the back of the plane to adjust things. You know, when, when we tap the plane, that moves the blade back and it moves the wedge out or loosens the wedge. So one way to think about that is tapping on the blade, of course, moves the blade forward. Tapping on the body moves the body forward, and because of the you know the inertia of the blade, it tends to want to stay put. So that that loosens the blade. So being able to tap at an angle that you know kind of matches the angle of the blade is is helpful. It, it works to hit the back, but it, it it's more efficient to tap at that same angle. So I, I also try, if possible, to to get an angle at the back there that is is you know perpendicular to the blade. One other thing I should point out when I'm when I'm making you know these two cuts, that's yeah you know, I'm just going through solid wood. When you make this cut. You have to be think about what you're doing because on the bandsaw, you know, you're going to get a lot of resistance as you're going through the solid wood. But as soon as you hit this open area, all of a sudden it's going to really go more quickly. So, so anticipate that because that, if you're not ready for it, that can really uh, either scare you or throw you off or have you cut crooked. Next up, I want to create this uh, curve here. So I'd like to cut away most of that. So I've drawn on the uh, back side here where I want to make some cuts. And, and I, those, you know, those cuts need to be on this curve, ideally. So I've got my uh, compass set up here so that I can draw that. And I'll do the same thing here. So I need to make those cuts. Now that's not a simple thing to do. I could use a coping saw, but I, I really don't have a coarse enough blade to do that. I could also nibble away, maybe on the band saw, make some cuts. If you know, if I keep this flat and and do it like that, but it's it's can be a pain to do. David Fink mentions doing it on the bandsaw by by curving this, which which I've done, but that is really tricky. You really have to be comfortable on the bandsaw because if you've you've got you're basically balancing on an edge and and kind of feeding that through at a funny angle, 
And if it, you know, if it moves at all or catches, it'll catch the blade. You could break the blade and, and it could really be nasty. So I don't suggest that, but, but that is a possibility. So however you do that, you know, be careful and, uh, you know, if you have to, just take a rasp and grind away at it. All right, I've cut most of the material away and I've got a uh, regular rasp here. So I'm going to uh, just go ahead and, and, you know, get this roughly smooth and then I'll switch to a pattern maker's rasp. And I, I typically, I'm, I might stop with a file. I typically don't get this super smooth. I'm, I'm not going to sand it. I, I kind of like the, the texture. It gives you a nice grip. I've switched to the pattern maker's wraps now, so it's starting to get a little smoother. Okay, I think I've got the back pretty well squared away now. That looks pretty good. And I, I finished with the, uh, I've got two, two pattern maker's rasps. One's a little finer than the other. So I finished with the fine one. I might tweak that a little bit more, but that's looking good. So now I'll work on the end. It'll be similar. Now I want to be careful I don't, you know, hit this edge or it's going to get tear out. So I want to, you know, if, if I'm doing that edge, I want to come in from this side. So I'll, I'll work this way and then I'll work that way. Last up, I'm going to hit this top surface here. And I don't know if I put this in a face vise, but I don't have the camera set up right now for that. So I'm, I've just got it between dogs here and I'm, I'm just going to you know, smooth this a little bit. As with the bandsaw, when you're, when you're filing or rasping here, you need to be careful because you're only hitting a couple of small spots here. You've got much more area here. The other thing I found, you know, depending on this curve, you might have to use the curved portion of your, your rasp or your file. Uh, I probably have to use it here and then I can probably get away with the flat portion here. It's, it's relatively flat. So as I'm, as I'm doing this, I am putting a very slight curve this way just, just to make it easier to, to file this. If it was totally flat, it's hard to hit that whole surface. So I'm just doing a very slight angle and then I'll turn it around and come in from the other side. On this top surface, since this is uh, face grain, I'm going to finish with a file. Here the rasp I think is fine on this end grain. But but it's it's a little coarser than I like up on top here. So. Well, I decided to finish up this end grain with with a file. Okay, I'm happy with that. That that looks good. The profile looks nice. It's comfortable, except you know I still have the all these sharp corners. So I'm going to knock these corners down. Uh, that'll help you know, eliminate. Uh, cracking and things and of course make it more comfortable. I don't typically knock these bottom edges down much, you know, particularly in the front. You you want the you know the front of the plane to push push things out of the way. If you round that much it might you know ride up on top of you know shavings and things when you're using it. The the sides and back you could round a little bit more, but I, I, I tend to just do those a little bit. So I'll go ahead and finish that up. We'll put it back together and try it out. I've got all the edges nice and rounded now. That feels comfortable. 
I checked the bottom and it still looks nice and flat. I just held a straight edge up, up to it, up to the light. You will have to flatten the bottom on occasion. So typically just take some 320 grit sandpaper and uh, on a flat surface and just tune it up a little. If, particularly if you, if you leave the plane tensioned over time, it's always a good idea to loosen the wedge if you're not gonna use it for a little bit. Before I start using it, I want to wax the bottom, so I like to take some paraffin wax and just just rub it on there. And then I'm just going to take a piece of wood and, and burnish it in. And that, that really makes a difference. It'll really almost polish the bottom of the plane. So now when I hold that up to the light, yeah, I mean, that that looks amazing. So now we're ready to uh, put the blade in and try it out. So like I said before, to uh, initially set this up, I want to set the plane on a flat, clean surface. I'll drop the blade in and and make sure the blades you know centered in the body and down flat and then I'm going to uh, tap the wedge in now I this probably isn't a big deal it's just me but I like to use the wood part of the hammer on the wood and the metal on the metal you could if you just had a brass hammer which I think most most plane adjusting hammers are you could use the brass on the wood and on the metal I would avoid using the wood of the hammer on the metal. It's, I think you could, because those edges are kind of sharp, you could crack or chip, chip the wood. So I'm going to sight down the plane, and that looks pretty good, actually. Normally it's, it's off a little bit. Um, so, you know, this is fairly much common sense. If, if it was sticking out too much on the uh, left side, I would tap off to the side a little bit. And I should point out, that's, that's why, you, one of the reasons you want this scooped out, so you have access to the uh, sides of the blade. To uh, make a little deeper cut, of course, I would tap on the back of the blade. A uh, shallower cut, I'm going to tap on the body of the plane. And, and typically when you're done, just couple taps on the wedge. So it takes a little getting used to to figure that out and every plane seems to be a little bit different in terms of you know how hard you need to tap and where you need to tap but uh, you, you figure it out. So let's see how this works. Okay so that looks okay. It's a little heavy on the cut so give it a little tap there and like I said that's how hard you tap is going to vary depending on your plane and how tight the wedge is. Okay that's looking better. A little heavy on the right so I'll just give it a little tap there. And that's doing okay. I, I think the blade's gotten a little dull so I'm going to Sharpen up the blade and we'll give this another go. All right, I've got the blade resharpened. I went all the way up to 16,000 grit and I've got this dialed in now and it's working really sweet. That's a nice shaving. So very happy with that. I, I should you know point out if if the plane doesn't seem to be working correctly, particularly if it's taking a shaving at maybe just the ends or taken inconsistent, you probably need to flatten it. That's that's usually a sign that something's not quite flat. But this is this is working sweet. I don't think I could expect any more than more than that. Wow, is that smooth.